Hello everyone. In this video, I want to go over some basic concepts for product lighting using a three-point light setup. For this demo, I'm going to go ahead and use this phone model. To start things off, I'm going to come up here to create cameras and I'm going to create a camera. You always want to create your own camera to render from. That way you always have consistent results. Came up here to panels perspective and change to camera. And I'm just going to place this camera somewhere that kind of shows off this phone model. Kind of want to see the front and the side. And I want to be zoomed in as much as possible. I'm going to come up here to the Arnold dropdown and click open Arnold render view and go ahead and hit play on the render view button. Now you're going to see it is going to be completely black. That is because there are currently no lights in this scene. I'm going to go ahead and change this panel perspective back to perspective. That way I can move this one around and the camera that I'm rendering from is always from the same exact position. I'm going to come up here to Arnold lights and area light. I'll place this light kind of like so, even kind of scale this up. And you're going to see it's still completely black. That is because the intensity of this light is still very low. I'm just going to place the view kind of right like so. And you have two options you can change, either intensity or exposure. If you change intensity, you will notice you'll have to punch in some pretty strong numbers. So if I hit 10, it's still going to come out really dark. If I change it to 100, now I can kind of see it tiny bits and change it to 1000. Now it is starting to show up a little bit more. Now you are noticing uh, the render is actually still coming from this perspective camera, despite it saying camera shape right up here. Sometimes this is a weird little bug. You just have to change this to perspective, change it back to camera, and now it is rendering from the correct camera. Back on the intensity, I'm going to go ahead and add another zero still, and it gets even brighter. But you'll see right here, now this number is set to 10,000, which is pretty large. If instead I change just back to default one. I can choose to start boosting the exposure using individual numbers, kind of like so. And you'll notice I start getting uh, very similar results while using much smaller numbers. So it really comes down to you on how you want to work. And you can also kind of think of these as multipliers. So you can use them in tandem with each other. I'm going to go ahead and keep intensity at default one. And I'm just going to stick with exposure. Now to set up a three point light setup, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this light two more times. And I'm just hitting shift D and I'm going to go ahead and name these three lights. So this first one, I'm going to double click this and I'll just add key to the back of it. Uh, a key light is your main source of lighting. The next light I'm going to set up is fill. Fill helps fill in some of the shadows that are present from the key light. And the third one, I'm going to change to rim. Rim is going to be the light that happens behind the product. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this camera a little bit. Uh, my camera that I'm rendering from is right there. And I'm going to go ahead and place my key light somewhere close to that camera, kind of like so. The fill light typically is more perpendicular to the camera you're rendering from. So I'm going to have this off to the left side since I kind of have the render camera on the right. And the fill light for now is just going to go kind of right behind the phone, kind of like that. And you'll notice I start getting this strong rim light that's starting to appear, which looks pretty nice. From here, I just want to start adjusting these. The rim light, I'm going to go ahead and scale up a little bit. This key light, since it is the key and it's supposed to be the main source of lighting, I need to boost this up even more. So let's try bumping this up to 14, maybe 16. It's starting to look pretty nice. And to better see what all these lights are doing, if I come over here, let me go ahead and hide these two lights really quick. You'll notice this key light is pretty strong. It's showing off this pretty well, but I do get a lot of these shadows all along right here. And some of this actually disappears and you can't even read the silhouette of this phone too well. Let me unhide this fill light. Now you'll see the fill light if I turn this on and off. It just starts filling in some of these dark areas. If I go ahead and hide the key light just so you can see it a little bit closely and see where it's hitting. Turn these back on and then I will turn on the rim light. And the rim light is sometimes my favorite light because it really helps stand out your product. And scale this rim light up even more. Maybe I'll raise it. And if I zoom in, you'll see this rim light is really helping essentially cut out the product from the environment. And in reality, we don't actually have an environment right now. The environment is completely black. Since we don't have an environment, let's go ahead and create that. I'm gonna come up here to create polygon primitives 
curves and plane scale this up. And now I can really start seeing the shadows and I can start seeing what all these lights are doing. Now, when it comes to this environment, uh, I can choose to just keep on scaling up this plane if I want to do so. It's kind of looks nice where you'll notice it's nice and bright over here and it just sort of fades off into darkness. Now, instead of doing that, I can also choose to build a psych wall. If you don't know what a psych wall is, I'm going to come over here to Google Images really quick. A psych wall is used in filming and photography, and it's just a wall that has a very round corner. You'll notice right here how it's built, and you may have seen these all over the place and just not known what they were called. I'm going to go ahead and scale down this plane a little bit until I can see that edge. I'm going to go ahead and remove all these subdivisions just because I don't need them, and I'll grab these four edges like so and just click extrude. And I'm just going to bring this up, and now I just have this hollow box. And in my render, I can see those edges, and this doesn't look very good because it's a nice strong edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these edges, and I'm going to do a bevel. Go ahead and reset the settings on this bevel. And with default settings, I'm just going to hit apply just to see what I get. So right now, this isn't at all looking very good. What I want to do is I want to give a lot more subdivisions or segments. So right now it has one. I'm going to change this to, let's say, 10. And right away, that's actually looking a lot better. Uh, but this roundness or this bevel might be too large. So let's try changing this fraction a little bit lower. So maybe like 0.25. It really is up to you how strong you want this edge to show up as well as it's based on where your lights are. Maybe like 0.3, that looks kind of nice. Now this rim light, it is casting this sort of shadow right here, which I don't think looks very good. To fix that, I think I just need to raise it a little bit more. I want a better, more gradual fall off from this light, and maybe I'll even rotate it a little bit, kind of like so. That's starting to look a lot nicer. And maybe I'll move this a little bit more. You'll notice I do kind of get this nice highlight right here, and this is all happening from this fill light. So if I slide this around, you'll see exactly what it's happening. Now to make this a bit easier, instead of having to constantly position and then rotate these lights, what I can do is set up an aim constraint from the lights. Uh, that way, no matter where I position the lights, it's always aiming at the phone. Now to do this, I'm already set to the rigging tab, but if you're not, come up here to modeling, change to rigging, and what I need to do is first create a locator under create locator and then I'm going to use the constraints tab. In order to set up the constraint correctly what you need to do is select the locator first. Hold control select your light. I'm up here to constrain and I'm going to open up the aim constraint dialog box. I'm going to go ahead and click reset on these tools just to get to default settings. Now with default settings if I hit apply this aim constraint isn't going to actually work correctly. You notice the light now rotates in a 90 degree angle but if I go ahead and and select this locator, you will see that the light is constrained to it. It's just constrained in the wrong direction. So I'm going to control Z to get back to normal. What I need to do is I need to change these values in this aim vector. The reason why it rotated at a 90 degree angle is because this first value was set to one. So instead, I'm going to change this to zero and I need to change the third value, which is Z. I need to change this to minus one and hit apply. You'll know this is now set up correctly because you can see this little aim on the light is now pointing at this locator, just like so. From here, I can select the locator again, click the light, in this case, my fill light, hit apply, and then hit the locator, hit the light, and hit apply and close that window. And now if I select this locator and move these around, you'll notice all the lights are always pointing at it. And I'll just go ahead and zero out that locator. And I think I'll just raise it a little bit. It's kind of like so, kind of right in about the center of the phone. Now, I think this environment still is looking too bright. Uh, to fix that, what I can do is just start scaling it up. You notice if I scale it smaller, it gets closer to the lights, which is why it gets brighter. And if I start scaling it larger, the environment starts getting darker. And I kind of like this look of where it gets darker and this rim light still really helps it stand out. Maybe something like that. And that was how to quickly set up a three-point light rig.